Good morning. Happy weekend. Happy day. Let's not label it. Let's just have fun. I wish I felt this way every day, like Monday. Um, all right, so we are in lesson 150, starting a new section. We're still in part one. I'm sorry, lesson 151. We're going to take two deep breaths and start with a prayer. Sorry. Really deep. Hold it. Slow. That relaxes me so much. I just love it. So another really deep breath. Hold it. Dear God, if left to my own devices, my perception will be skewed. I surrender to you everything that I think and feel. Please, God, take my past, plan my future, send your spirit to redeem my mind that I might be set free. May I be your channel, God, and serve the world. May I become who you would have me be, do what you would have me do, go where you would have me go, and say what you would have me say, and to whom, dear God. God, I thank you for all things. I love you. Amen. All right, so... We are on lesson 151. I think this is a better setup. I'm by the dog so they won't go crazy. Uh-oh, I'm dropping every, oh, I lost my feet, oh no. Sorry. So here we are, lesson 151. All things are echoes for the voice of the voice of God. Okay, let me try that, just scrap that. Let's try again. All things are echoes of the voice for God. I'm going to repeat that. All things are echoes of the voice for God. No one can judge on partial evidence. That is not judgment. It is merely an opinion based on ignorance and doubt. Its seeming certainty is but a cloak for the uncertainty it would conceal. It needs irrational defense because it is irrational. And its defense seems strong, convincing, and without a doubt because of all the doubting underneath. You do not seem to doubt the world you see. You do not really question what is shown you through the body's eyes. Nor do you ask why you believe it, even though you learned a long while since your senses do deceive. That you believe them, that you believe them to the last detail which they report is even stranger. When you pause to recollect how frequently they have been faulty witnesses indeed. Isn't that funny? Why would you trust them so implicitly? Why but because of underlying doubt which you would hide with show of certainty? How can you judge? How can I judge? Your judgment rests upon the witness that your senses offer you. So your judgment rests upon the witness that your senses offers, offer you. Yet, witness never falser was than this. But how else do you judge the world, you see? You place pathetic faith in what your eyes and ears report. You think that your fingers touch reality and close upon the truth. This is awareness that you understand and think more real than what is witnessed to by the eternal voice of God himself, for God himself. Can this be judgment? You have often been urged to refrain from judging, not because it is a right to be withheld from you, 
you you cannot judge you just you cannot judge you merely can believe the ego's judgments all of which are false you merely can believe I'm sorry the ego's judgments all of which are false it guides your senses carefully to prove how weak you are, how helpless and afraid, how apprehensive of just punishment, how black with sin, how wretched in your guilt. This thing it speaks of and would yet defend, it tells you is yourself. And you believe that this is so with stubborn certainty. Yet underneath remains the hidden doubt that what it shows you as reality with such conviction it does not believe. It is itself alone that it condemns. It is itself alone that it condemns. It is within itself it sees the guilt. It is its own despair that it sees in you. Hear not its voice. The witnesses it sends to prove to you it's evil is your own are false and speak with certainty of what they do not know. Your faith in them is blind because you would not share the doubts their load cannot completely vanquish. You believe to doubt his vassals is to doubt yourself. Yet, you must learn to doubt their evidence will clear the way to recognize yourself and let the voice for God alone be judge of what is worthy of your own belief. He will not tell you that your brother should be judged by what your eyes behold in him, nor what his body's mouth says to your ears, nor what your fingers touch reports of him. He passes by such idle witnesses which merely bear false witness to God's Son. He recognizes only what God loves and in the holy light of what he sees do all the ego's dreams of what you are vanish before the splendor he beholds. Let him be judge of what, I'm sorry, yeah, exactly, I'm sorry, I'm going to start this over. Let him be judge of what you are, for he has certainty in which there is no doubt because it rests on certainty so great that doubt is meaningless before its face. And just so you know, the he is capitalized. Let me, um, I'm going to start over with paragraph seven because it's pretty powerful. I have a beautiful puppy here with his mommy. All right, so, all right, here we go. Yet you must learn to doubt their evidence will clear the way to recognize yourself and let the voice for God alone be judge of what is worthy of your own belief. He, capital H, will not tell you that your brother should be judged by what your eyes behold in him nor what his body's mouth says to your ears, nor what fingers touch reports of him. He passes, he, capital H, passes by such idle witnesses, which merely bear, of course it's the beginning of a sentence too, duh. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. He passes by such idle witnesses, which merely bear false witness to God's son. He recognizes only what God's love and in the holy light of what he sees, that's a capital H, do all the ego's dreams of what you are vanish before the splendor he beholds. Let him be judge of what you are, for he has certainty in which there is no doubt. Because it rests on certainty so great that doubt is meaningless before its face. Christ cannot doubt himself. The voice, I'm going to turn this a little over so you can see Bentley. He's just soothing too. Okay, sorry. As are these words. All right. Christ cannot doubt himself. The voice for God can only honor him, rejoicing in his perfect, everlasting, sinless 
sinlessness. Whom he has judged can only laugh at guilt, unwilling now to play with toys of sin, unheeding of the body's witnesses before the rapture of Christ's holy face. He likes to, he's looking at the mirror. He's looking at the, hey, Casey? Casey? You like reading A Course in Miracles? Aw. He's looking at the camera. It's funny. He's like, that's my mommy. Yeah. All right. All right. Whom he has judged. I'm going to repeat this last sentence because I got sidetracked and I apologize. Whom he has judged can only laugh at guilt, unwilling now to play with toys of sin, unheeding of the body's witnesses before the rapture of Christ's holy face. What do you think of that? And thus, he judges you. Accept his word for what you are, for he bears witness to your beautiful creation and the mind whose thought created your reality. What can the body mean to him who knows the glory of the Father and the Son? What whispers of the ego can he hear? What could convince him that your sins are real? Let him be judge as well of everything that seems to happen to you in this world. His lessons will enable you to bridge the gap between illusions and the truth. He will remove all faith that you have placed in pain, disaster, suffering, and loss. He gives you vision which can look beyond these grim appearances and can behold the gentle face of Christ in all of them. You will no longer doubt that only good can come to you who are beloved of God, for he will judge all happening, all happening, let me try that word again, all happenings and teach the single lesson that they all contain. He will select the elements in them which represent the truth and disregard those aspects which, which represent but idle dreams. And he will reinterpret all that you see and all occurrences, each circumstance and every happening that seems to touch you in any way from his one frame of reference, wholly unified and sure. And you will see the love beyond the hate, the constancy and change, the pure in sin. And only heaven's blessing on the world, such is your resurrection. For your life is not a part of anything you see. It stands beyond the body and the world, past every witness for unholiness, within the holy, holy as itself. In everyone and everything, his voice would speak to you of nothing but yourself and your creator, who is one with him. So will you see the lovely face of Christ in everything and hear in everything no sound except the echo of God's voice. We practice wordlessly today except at the beginning of the time we spend with God. We introduce these times with but a single slow repeating of the thought with which the day begins. And then we watch our thoughts appealing silently to him who sees the element of truth in them. Let him evaluate each thought that comes to mind, remove the elements of dreams, and give them back again as clean ideas that do not contradict the will of God. Give him your thoughts and he will give them back as miracles which joyously proclaim the wholeness and the happiness that God wills his son as proof of his eternal love. And as each thought is thus transformed, it takes on healing power from the mind which saw the truth in it and failed to be deceived by what was falsely added. All the threads of fantasy are gone. 
and what remains is unified into a perfect thought that offers its perfection everywhere. Spend 15 minutes thus when you awake and gladly give another 15 minutes before you go to sleep. Your ministry begins as all your thoughts are purified. So are you taught to teach the Son of God the holy lesson of his sanctuary. No one can fail to listen when you hear the voice for God, give honor to God's Son. And everyone will share the thoughts with you which he has translated in your mind. Such is your Easter tide. And so you lay the gift of snow white lilies on the world, replacing witnesses to sin and death. I love that, uh, the snow white lilies, replacing sin and death. Through your transfiguration is the world redeemed and joyfully released from guilt. Now do we lift our resurrected minds in gladness, gladness, gladness and in gratitude to him who has restored our sanity to us what do you think about that you think that's pretty awesome can i have a kiss what do you think about that huh? 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 what that's my baby all right <laughs> He's like, what are you doing, Mommy? I want all your love and attention. Where's my bone? <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. So you lift, lay the gift of snow-white lilies on the world, replacing witnesses to sin and death. Through your transfiguration is the world redeemed and joyfully released from guilt. Now do we lift our resurrected minds in gladness and in gratitude to him who has restored our sanity to us. And we will hourly remember him who is salvation and deliverance. As we give thanks, the world unites with us and happily accepts our happy thoughts, our holy thoughts, which are happy thoughts, our holy thoughts, which heaven has corrected and made pure. Now has our ministry begun at last to carry round the world the joyous news that truth has no illusions and the peace of God through us belongs to everyone. So practice 15 minutes in the morning, 15 at night. Try to remind yourself hourly. Great apps for that, by the way. Just Google um, A Course in Miracles or ACIM. Not Google, but under the, do a search under the apps. Or whatever type phone you have there's great apps out there available give him your thoughts and he will give them back as miracles which joy joy joyously proclaim the wholeness and the happiness god wills his son as proof of his eternal love that's it right there Pew. and as each thought is transformed it takes on a healing power from the mind which saw the truth in it the mind is a capital m and failed to be deceived by what was falsely added all the threads of fantasy are gone and what remain is what remains is unified into a perfect thought capital t that offers its perfection everywhere i i love i love the I love, I love the course, but I love the words. I love the, the poetry of the course. All things are echoes of the voice for God. All things echo God's voice. Whether I see that or not, it's true. No one can judge on partial evidence. You do not seem to doubt the world you see. How can you judge? Can this be judgment? This thing it speaks of and would yet defend, it tells you it is yourself. Hear not its voice. You must learn to doubt their evidence will clear the way to recognize yourself and let the voice for God alone be judge of what is worthy 
of your own belief. Let him be judge of what you are, for he has certainty in which there is no doubt because it rests on certainty, capital C, so great that doubt is meaningless before its face. And thus he judges you. Accept his word for what you are, for he bears witness to your beautiful creation and the mind whose thought created your reality. And those three words are capitalized. Mind whose thought created your reality, your only reality. He will remove all faith that you have placed in pain, disaster, suffering, and loss. It's gone. Whew. He will select the elements in them which represent the truth, love, and disregard those aspects which represent and reflect but idle dreams, anything else, anything else. We practice wordlessly today except at the beginning of the time we spend with God. We introduce these times with but a single slow repeating of the thought with, with which the day begins. All things are echoes of the voice for God. Give him your thoughts and he will give them back as miracles which joyously proclaim the wholeness and the happiness that God wills his son as proof of his eternal love. Fifteen minutes when you awake and gladly give another fifteen more before you go to sleep. Such is your Easter tide. Hourly remember him who is salvation and deliverance. Thank you, thank you. I love you. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, 151. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love you. I love this time. I just feel so vibrant right now. All things are echoes of the voice for God. So we're going to go ahead and take two deep breaths and pray out. Take really deep breaths. Hold on and exhale slowly. And just move your whole body with it. And then, um, that's it. Thank you. I love you. Have a beautiful day. Dear God, please grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, love, the courage to change the things that I can, my thoughts, and the wisdom to know the difference, to trust in you and reflect with you throughout my day. I love you, God. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Amen. I, I, I thank you. Thank you for your patience. I love you.